obedience the whole of the race which was sold into slavery because of Adam's sin would now be delivered and brought back to eternal life through that sacrifice of Jesus. Do 
beyond human limits. Grace is the key to live beyond human limits. Now let's see. This brother has heard me. 
my mood goes off. Have you heard that word mood? Yeah, my mood goes off. But now, when I get myself aware of what Jesus said, what did Jesus say? Love. Love one another. That is very easy. Love your enemies when you feel good. Did he say love your enemies when you feel good? No conditions. He just said love your love your enemies. Now you are aware of the scripture, okay? And I can you see and everything in you wants to take back. And what's that scripture begins to speak to you? And now the spirit of God says, love your enemies. So my mission is to give him back. Now my submission would be, Lord, because your word says so, I have made a decision to love him. Now please understand, please understand this. When you make a decision to love him, will your feelings go with him? Your feelings will be opposite to what you are, what you want to do. Because you are, you are wanting to do what Jesus told you to do, but your feelings are exactly opposite. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Please understand that God who is asking us to love one another, He is asking us to love one another with an agape love. A agape love is a love that is unconditional, a love that is not based on performance. Every other love in this world flows naturally. But when it comes to agape love, it will never flow naturally. It has to be taught and trained. Hallelujah. 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 And when you are training yourself with that agape love, your feelings will be on the opposite side. But when you make a decision and you act on it, your feelings will begin to change according to that. Are, are, are you following? See, listen, my every feeling is negative towards it. Okay? God's word is saying, be submissive. So what am I going to do? Love it. So what am I going to do? I make a decision to love it. Are my emotions in favor of what I'm doing? No. But when I begin to do it, and do it, and do it, because I love God, because I love Jesus, these emotions which are negative will now begin to change, and these feelings also will change in favor of that decision, and by now, my character has changed. See, our submission to God is based on a feeling. I felt good, so let me go and do it. Uh -huh. It's not that way. Our submission to God is not based on our senses. It's based on a decision that God is asking us to make. Did Mother Mary say to Angel Gabriel, listen, what you are asking is so difficult. Just hold on. I'll go and talk to Mama and come back and let you know. Did she say, and listen, Angel, let me go and talk to Joseph and let, and let you know. What did she say? The moment she was made aware, she said to herself, all of the things are nothing compared to what God has told me. He is the top and I am submitted to you because I am your happy. Total submission. When you begin to live a total submission to praise, praise be to God, now you begin to realize that God is doing wonders in your life. And in, in, and in submission, one thing is necessary, death of yourself has to be involved. As long as your self is alive, you will never be able to accomplish God's purpose in your life. That self has to die by your choice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Go and find someone.
son. Six months he remained on my bike. He got a job in Dubai and he left. But he put it in my heart to start something for the drug addicts and the alcoholics. He made me aware. God used him to make me aware. He went and I spoke my dream to my brothers. And I said, this is what God wants us to do. And the others in the team agreed. And 15 years back, I made a decision when God said, freely you have received, freely you shall give. So from 15 years, this is my 15th year, I made a desire, Lord, whatever service I will do, I'll never charge money for it, never take a law of it, never ask for collection, never ask for donation, I'll work for you free. And I got stuck to it. I began to share it with my brothers, they also agreed. And we began our journey, preaching the word of God here and there, and we started taking days on rent and preaching to the alcoholics and drug addicts. And what started in a small way, God began to look at the heart and began to do in a supernatural way that today there is a big house that has been constructed which today's value is nothing less than 30 crores. I, I, I will be. And when I go and stand there on the, on the, on the platform, on the altar, and I look at it, I said, God, this is a house that you built supernaturally. And I've got so much of, uh, uh, so much of, uh, you know, zeal to say that this house was built without love of it, without a connection. Why? Because of His grace. I begin to realize that I don't need people's resources. I need God's awareness and submission to God's awareness of what is telling me and get out of to faith and He will provide everything for me. I began to realize the more and more I found my purpose in God's kingdom and began to run the race in that purpose, God began to unfold His secrets and began to show me what He wants to do in my life. In September, my birthday, I went for confession and I finished my confession and we had a mass, uh, we just finished the mass and I went to the priest for confession and I said, this mass, I was crying for because the Holy Spirit told me, it, on this birthday, I want you to ask God for a gift. And what is that gift? The gift to love as Christ loves you. So I went to the priest and I was crying and I said, Father, I'm asking God to give me a gift, a gift to love. Love the way Jesus loves me. And he made a prayer and he said, Son, God has answered your prayer. This was in September. In November, I met a priest. And this priest was, uh, I met him in a coffee shop. He had come with his friend and we had a meeting together. And this priest was depressed. He was depressed because Nine years he was in Nepal as a principal of a school. There were about 3,000 students. The school would get over at 2.30 in the afternoon. And this priest said, one day when he was going in the market, a young boy came running into his arms. And there were people who were chasing him. So he stopped them from beating him. He asked the boy what he had done. He had stolen a cake. So he paid the, those people the money. They were angry with him. 